it going, guys? Welcome back to Fraud on the Telly. In today's video, we're breaking down everything that happened in episode two of House of the Dragon. An episode in which Daemon steals a dragon egg, the series takes a new wife, and Rhaenyra makes a bold decision. As always, if you enjoyed the video and learned something new, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell, and don't forget to check out our other House of the Dragon content. Let's get right into it, shall we? Our episode begins with a six-month time gap from episode one and the death of Emma, King Viserys' wife. King Viserys and his family are still grieving, but the show must go on. We start our episode in a small council meeting. Raiding in the Stepstones by the pirate known as the Crab Eater has grown more overwhelming. Lord Valerion is quite upset at this, as this is basically on the border of his realm and finds it as a bit of an insult that they would allow this raiding to happen. Lord Valerion tells King Viserys that if he does not take action that this makes the throne look weak. Pair this with the fact that Daemon Targaryen, who we knew was banished in a sense in the last episode, has apparently squatted at the Targaryen ancestral home of Dragonstone, calling him the Prince of Dragonstone. If you don't know, the Prince or Princess of Dragonstone is generally considered the title that is given to the apparent heir of the Iron Throne. These two things together are not a great look for our King Viserys, and Lord Valyrian presses the king to take matters into their own hands, telling him they need to send out his fleet. Viserys, being a very cautious man, obviously does not want anything to do with any kind of war with his brother or with potentially these pirates that are backed by the free cities. Suddenly, our homegirl Renera pipes up as she is the cupbearer for the king, saying that father, you have dragon riders. We could simply send them out. Obviously, this sounds really bad, almost as if she and her uncle should get on their dragons and head down to the Stepstones and start f***ing shit up. This is definitely how Lord Valerion takes it, but apparently this is not how Rhaenyra exactly meant it. Her father, not really taking Rhaenyra very seriously, kind of brushes the comet aside, telling Rhaenyra that she should go pick the new Kingsguard, as apparently the old head of the Kingsguard passed away quietly in their sleep, so they need another one to complete the Seven. This is kind of a core theme of our episode, specifically with Rhaenyra, is Rhaenyra being taken seriously as an heir by her father and by the rest of the kingdom. As we've already established, Westeros is a monarchy ruled by men, with the passing of Princess Rhaenys, uh, the queen who never was many believing that a female heir just isn't possible. As well, there is pressure on King Viserys to take a new wife. Even though it's only been six months, the kingdom believes that Viserys needs more heirs to protect his line, specifically probably male heirs who are more likely to inherit the throne. Obviously, this puts Rhaenyra's position in danger as she is worried about her father potentially taking another wife, bearing more children, children that would compete with her for her airship. Is that even a word, airship? Like an airship that flies in the sky? Rare goes and picks the new Kingsbard member, ultimately picking Sir Kristen Cole, the knight who won uh, the tournament that we saw in episode one, unseating Daemon Targaryen, which is no small feat, by the way. Cole was chosen because he was the only one of these knights that had real combat experience. Fair enough. Keep an eye on this character, as we've said before, as they're going to play a pretty integral part to the long term story to come. Viserys is growing sick. The cuts that he's received from the Iron Throne seem to be infected, specifically in his pinky finger, if I remember correctly. He's forced to, like, put his hand in, like, a thing of maggots because the maesters say that's gonna eat the rot away. George R. Martin, where do you even come up with this stuff? As well, the issue of a new wife for Viserys is continually hit on throughout the episode. Lord Valyrian approaches the king with a solution to the problem in the Stepstones as well as to his new wife. He should marry his daughter, Lena Valerion, who's like 12 or something. What? Besides the fact that she's 12, the match would be, you know, pretty good. Valerion is a old Valerian house, one with Valerian blood, if you couldn't tell from their awesome hair. The king is pretty apprehensive for a number of reasons. One, her age. Two, it seems like he's genuinely grieving. And three, the obvious growing attraction to Alicent Hightower, who has been continuing her visits to the king under the instructions of her father. Now, we talked about this last episode, but the motive here is very much to get Alicent close to the grieving king, potentially setting her up to uh, be his new wife, which, spoiler alert, that's going to happen later at the end of the episode. Later, Rhaenyra sees her father walking on kind of a date, I guess, with uh, Elena Valerian. 
and weird. She's obviously mad because she feels like she's gonna get replaced with an heir somewhere along the line. Also, she misses her mother when she's confronted by Princess Rhaenys, the queen who never was. Rhaenys goes full pessimist on our girl Rhaenyra, basically telling her that, hey, you're gonna end up like me, replaced, because women in this society just aren't valued. As we've said before, George R. R. Martin is a mega feminist. If you couldn't tell from the story of Game of Thrones, even though the end was extremely butchered and so was the message, but the issue of succession in Game of Thrones really brings this out as George constantly harps on the fact that women aren't allowed to be rulers, as this is kind of the main integral part of the story of House of the Dragon, at least for now. Basically, Rhaenys tells Rhaenyra, you're gonna end up like me, and Rhaenyra says, no, I won't, because I'm not you. It seems Rhaenyra wants to take some matters into her own hands. Later, the king and the council are informed that Daemon had stolen a dragon egg, specifically the dragon egg that would have been given to Viserys' son, the one that died when they were born. Obviously, this super pisses off Rhaenyra and her her father, Viserys, vowing to go to Dragonstone and deal with the problem until Otto Hightower steps in, saying he's gonna go handle it himself. Yeah, we know that this is not gonna go well. We get a crazy awesome shot of Dragonstone. Dragonstone really is probably the coolest set of all of Game of Thrones, maybe besides the wall, in my opinion. I mean, obviously, the Red Keep's super cool, but this bridge that they were on in uh, Dragonstone, freaking awesome scene. There's a big standoff between Damon and Otto on this bridge. Otto basically telling Daemon that, hey, you're basically a traitor of the crown at this point, and if it wasn't for your brother, you probably would have been killed by now. What the heck are you doing? Things are going nowhere. Swords end up being drawn until Daemon's dragon makes a sudden appearance, basically turning the tides as the dragon's like pulling out a gun in a knife fight. Like, what are you going to do? Suddenly, though, the tables have turned and the planes are level as out of nowhere, Rhaenyra comes flying in on her dragon in a super epic scene. She walks up to Daemon basically saying, what are you doing, uncle? This is my home. I am the heir. If you want to be heir so badly, just kill me. I'm right here. I'm what's standing between you and that throne. Now, Daemon so far has been made to look like quite the not great guy, but this guy's got a bit of a heart of gold somewhere deep within all that edginess, I promise you. So Daemon decides not to kill his niece and hands her the egg, storming off. Renera returns home. She finally has a heart to heart with her father, her father realizing that his daughter has become a young woman and is quite much more like his former wife, Emma, than he realized. It finally seems that Renera, in a way has proven herself to her father. Maybe she will finally take her seriously now. Following days at the small council, Viserys decides to name his new wife. In a plot twist that no one saw coming, Viserys names Alicent Hightower his new wife, who for some reason just happens to be in the small council room? Why is she here? She's not normally here. She's not allowed to be here. Everyone else in this room is allowed to be here. So maybe Viserys told Otto beforehand? I don't know. Interesting. Obviously, they wanted this scene between Renera and Alicent as they're friends right now, and Renera feels completely betrayed by Alicent. It's funny because there was a four foreshadowing scene super early on in this episode where they were in the sept together. Rhaenyra basically telling Alicent her fear of being replaced by a next coming heir from his next wife. Alicent then reassures her, but lo and behold, Alicent is that next wife. This dynamic is super, super important for the rest of the House of the Dragon story, so make sure you pay close attention to it in our upcoming episodes. Our episode ends with a pissed off Lord Valarian telling his plight to an unknown person who is revealed to be Daemon Targaryen. Again, no one was surprised here. At least I wasn't. He asked Daemon to go and deal with this crab feeder, this pirate that is raiding in the Stepstones. This is a perfect opportunity for Daemon to prove his worth. Now, we've only really seen it in the tourney, but Daemon is regarded as like the best warrior in the realm. He's basically like the Jamie on steroids of House of the Dragon. So he seems pretty ready and willing to go do so. We know he has a dragon, an army of gold folks, and probably a decent amount of money to hire some cell swords. So surely this will be easy work for our edgy boy. Overall, I've really enjoyed House of the Dragon so far. I mean, it's super early. It's very much possible for them to completely flub this show, but so far, I like the pacing. I like how true it's been to Fire and Blood. I like the cast, and I like the story and the politics and how it's playing out so far. Even viewers who have no idea what the story is and know the story of Fire and Blood can pick up the pieces that are being dropped for us. You can see kind of the scheming and what's happening with the issues of 
who is going to be an heir and the upcoming, you know, big dance of the dragons that's going to happen. You can see where the roadmap goes out even without having read Fire and Blood and without having been exposed to any kind of spoilers. Speaking of spoilers, right now we're going to real quickly discuss some spoilers. So if you enjoyed the video, learned something new, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Now, obviously, we know Daemon goes out and conquers the Stepstones, declaring himself king for a short while and then eventually returning. I think this is over the course of like a year, maybe more. All the while, Allison ends up fathering children for Viserys, a total of three if I remember correctly, but the most importantly being Aegon II Targaryen. It's been really fun watching the dynamic setup between Alicent and Rhaenyra as, you know, those who've read the book and know spoilers know that eventually they're going to be clashing heads with each other. This childhood friendship is not going to last for very long when Rhaenyra realizes that Alicent uh, seems to be doing a little bit of scheming, trying to put her children on the throne. As well, the buildup for the relationship between Rhaenyra and Daemon is also quite interesting. Eventually, these two will get together and join their powers like some sort of Captain Planet or something, becoming the super badass Targaryen weird in the best power couple that we've all wanted? If you can't tell, I'm really enjoying this show. The Dance of the Dragons is one of the coolest events in all of Game of Thrones. So the fact that we get it on film is super freaking awesome. I just hope that they don't ruin it. As always, if you enjoyed the video and learned something new, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell and check out some of our other House of the Dragon content. As always, guys, thank you for watching my video. I hope to see you in the next one. Stay safe out there. Peace, love, adieu.